Good morning, everyone. I uh, trust that you're having a great day. I'm uh, here in the sanctuary next to the Christmas tree. And uh, you've probably guessed by now that I'm uh, quite a defender of Christmas trees. I've had people in, that have come along in my life, and uh, you probably have too, that have uh, suggested that uh, perhaps uh, you know having a Christmas tree is a is a bad thing to have uh, in your home or in your worship center uh, because uh, somehow it's uh, a pagan symbol. Uh, yet uh, I don't see it that way. In fact, uh, I think uh, it's good uh, for us to have a tree as a reminder of the tree. Uh, as a reminder to us of uh, the tree of life. In fact, uh, we uh, pick an evergreen tree on purpose as a reminder to us about eternal life and about uh, life through the Son, Jesus Christ, the one who came at Christmas time. But I want to uh, develop that a little bit more here this morning. Uh, in uh, Revelation 22, we read about the tree of life. Uh, in fact, it's its last appearance, it's its final reappearance in the Bible. Uh, you re may, may remember the, the last time we heard about the tree of life in the Bible was in Genesis, uh, after the fall has happened, and uh, the Lord uh, says that they must be barred from the tree of life, uh, lest they uh, get in and take from the fruit of the tree. But the good news is, is that through Jesus Christ, uh, we now have access to the tree of life. And the tree of life is described at the end of the Bible in Revelation 22 as having a crop every month. That it's uh, the tree in the beautiful city uh, where we will dwell with our Lord for eternity. And there's a statement that's made there that catches my eye. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. You know, at Christmas time, we uh, sometimes sing that, that, that favorite song. Uh, it's a, a line from Joy to the World, where it says uh, that he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love. And then it goes on to remind us that he is the one who erases the curse. In fact, there's that repeating of that line, for as the curse is found, for as the curse is found. You see, the one who died on the tree, the one who went to that other tree, the, the tree and took the curse for us, has made it so that we can uh, take from the tree of life. And the tree of life is for the healing of the nations. I think no other Christmas like I've lived through at least uh, have we needed that message of the healing of the nations. We're a nation and we're a province that is uh, in a dire situation right now. Yet we know that that situation is, uh, is not uh, dire for us who know Jesus Christ. That we have received the healing of the nations. So let's uh, share that good news with uh, anyone who will listen. Let's share that message that the healing of the nations has come through Jesus Christ, the one who went to the tree so that we can uh, partake of the tree of life, that we can live for eternity through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So as you're gathered around your Christmas tree, remember that it's a reminder of that tree in the city the tree of life with the crop that uh, comes every month and that has the leaves for the healing of the nations so that the curse will no longer be found, that we will be healed through Jesus Christ. I hope you're having a great day. God bless you.